Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create an awesome drip effect in Photoshop. Rightio, so we're now in Photoshop and I've opened up an image of our subject that we're going to be applying our drip effect to. And for this tutorial, we're going to be focusing on the lips. So if we right click on the background layer and select duplicate layer, and we'll switch this off. So we have the background image, the original, just if we need to reference it or in case anything goes wrong. And we'll just double click this layer and call this subject. The first thing we're going to do is go to filter and down to liquify. And if we zoom in nice and close, we're going to start with the option at the top which is the liquify brush. And you can adjust the brush size using the left and right square brackets on the keyboard, or you've got the properties over here on the right. And we're just going to left click and drag down. And you want to drag as straight as possible, so we don't want to do anything like this. And vary the brush sizes as well. So we've got some drips starting to form here. And the one in the center is a little bit more pronounced. Something like this. Maybe this one comes down a bit more. So we'll make it feel as random as possible. And once you've done something like this, we can then increase that brush size using the same tool. And we can just nudge this back so it's a little bit straighter. So you really can use this to the extreme and just move this around and liquefy it until you get the exact shape. So something like this is good. And we're then going to select the bloat tool. And you might need to experiment with a few different sizes of brush here. So have edit and step backwards ready to go. It's a shortcut worth learning. And we're just going to left click for about half a second. Maybe bring that brush down. So we're just focusing on the bottom. And now we're going to select the one above it, which is pucker. So bloat bloats it outwards and pucker makes it go in. So we're just going to left click, not for very long, just a few seconds. And you can see I'm just single left clicking now. Because if I left click and hold, this tool is very powerful and it will work very quickly. So we've kind of got a bit of a drip forming and we'll switch back to the liquify tool and we'll just start to adjust the position here. So I'm just left clicking and dragging. So you can really effectively shape the actual shape of this exactly how you'd like it. And it's just a case of trial and error trying a few different brush sizes and I'm just left clicking with the pucker tool now and then just shaping that with the liquify tool and you can see we can actually shape everything about this and if you're not happy with something it's definitely worth using that step backwards option up here. If you kind of shape it a little bit too much, it will remove it altogether and you'll need to start again. But I think something like this is looking pretty good. You can of course spend as much time as you like here. And we'll click OK. So this is where we were. And this is our drip effect applied. And of course it has distorted around the skin as well. So that's no good. So if we right click on our background layer that is hidden and select duplicate layer and click OK. We can turn this on and turn on our subject and we're going to add a layer mask to our subject. So the drip effect here is cool. This kind of distortion of the background with this darker area, it just isn't cool. So we want to get rid of that. So we'll add a layer mask to our subject and the layer mask is white at the moment and we'll go to image adjustments and invert. So effectively it completely hides that layer. And then if we select white as our foreground color, the brush tool and one of Photoshop's soft round pressure brushes, 
then we'll just adjust the brush size. We can then brush back in. Now remember when working with masks, white adds to the mask and black removes from it. So let's just brush over all this. You can see everything from our original subject layer now coming through. And that's using white. And now we can change the foreground color to black and we can brush over the areas we don't want and it will remove these from the mask. So we can now brush over all of this around the edge that we don't want. If you do brush too much by mistake, just swap the foreground color to white, brush it back in and then swap back to black. And you can press X on the keyboard to quickly swap those colors around. So this is a much less destructive way of working than something like the eraser tool and learning masks is definitely, definitely worth it just because it gives you that flexibility as well. And if you want to disable your mask temporarily, just hold shift and left click on it and you'll be able to see it, what your image looks like without the mask applied. Cool, so we've got the drip effect starting to come into play. Now we're gonna add a few more things to make this a little bit more realistic. We've got these highlights here on the lips. We want to add some of that to our drip effect. So we're going to add a new layer from the bottom of the layers panel, pick white as our foreground color, and we're going to use our brush tool again. Now this next bit you can do if you're using a mouse, that's fine, but if you have access to a graphics tablet that allows control of pen pressure, something like I'm using is a Wacom Intuos Pro graphics tablet. It's linked in the video description, but it just allows you to control things like pen pressure. And we can go to window, brush settings at the top. And that's the wrong panel. No, it's not, it's the right panel, brush settings. No, it was the wrong panel. There we go. So brush settings is the one you want. And we've got all of these different options down the left. If we click shape dynamics and size jitter, which varies the size of the brush, we can adjust the control to pen pressure. So now the harder I press down on the tablet, the larger the brush will be. If I press really gently, it'll be really soft. So what we're going to do now on our new layer we've created with white as our foreground color with the brush tool, we're just going to gently brush in a highlight. So we're just going to left click and drag something like this. Now what I'm doing is I'm just trying this lots of times and then quickly going edit step backwards using that same shortcut just so I get the right curve. That looks pretty good. I'm happy with that one. And we could then drop the opacity of this down a little bit. And I could even add a new layer with a slightly smaller brush and just press down a little bit more firmly to accentuate that highlight and then drop that opacity down a little bit. So you can see we've just added a highlight over here and we could do the same again over here as well. We could even just duplicate the highlight we've created, but let's not be lazy. Let's go and create another one. So I'm just going to try and get this right. So I'm just brushing and then undoing with every failed attempt. And there we go. So we've added that highlight as well. And something else we might want to add, if I just group all of these layers together and call these highlights, Something else we might want to add is a new layer and we're going to add some shadows as well. So we we'll use black as our foreground color with that soft feather brush. And we're just going to very carefully brush in some of the shadows in a few key places. So of course it depends on the image where your lights are coming from. But just to kind of demonstrate this technique I thought it'd be good to kind of show some shadows as well, just so we've got highlights and shadows. And I'm doing this very, very carefully using the brush tool. And we could try some different blending modes. We could go for multiply, which doesn't really do too much. But if we start dropping that opacity down, and you might want to try some different blend modes, depending on your image and the colors that you've got in your image, it might blend slightly differently but we'll call that 
shadows so you can see it's a very very subtle difference but it just helps add a little bit of realism to the image and you can make them more pronounced if you want or you could bring them ever so slightly away just kind of adjusting the position using the mouse but there we go we've gone from our original image to adding our drip effect to adding in some highlights and then a few subtle shadows as well and we're done and there we go that's how to create an awesome drip effect in photoshop as always guys please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below like this video if you enjoyed it take care and i'll see you next time